All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to hear a story titled, My ex-wife divorced me after she got cancer so that she could leave first. Now she wants to come back, should I give her another chance? And guys, this story, like the title says, is about a guy. He got married to his wife way too young. You'll hear more about that later. And shortly after they got married, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, something that I wouldn't wish upon anyone. And in that instant, this guy became, not only was he, he was already the model husband, but he really became the model husband. He was there for her, did everything he could to show support, love, do everything to help her get through this tough time. The type of husband that every woman would want to have in a situation like this. And like that, she kicks him to the curb, drops him like a bad habit, breaks his heart after all the things he does for her. He moves on, and then guess who's back a few years later, wanting a second chance. And you're going to see, guys, how he handles this whole thing, and her reasoning, that her excuses, that's better word to say, her excuses for what she did, dropping him like a bad habit. And a little clue, it has a lot to do with feminism. And I'll let you guys see in real time at the end of the story what I'm talking about there. And I'm, I did this one for a lot of reasons, guys. There's always a lesson in every story. There's multiple ones here. First lesson in this story is why I say is do not get married too young. You got to be with your girl or if you're a gal watching this with your guy for a long time, really seeing what they're like, what they're like when tough things come upon them, how they react to the situation, etc., etc. It's easy to be in a couple in a relationship when everything's going easy in life and nothing to worry about. Or another thing is how when a woman has a certain perception of you, you have to always remember that they're going to have that idea in their head about you all the time. You have to remember that. If you were always a good to them and that nice guy type and down the road they kick you to the curb and then you change, they're still going to think of that same nice guy pushover down the road. Or how in life, if someone does you wrong, there are no second chances. You got to move on because they'll do the same shit all over again. And number four, of course, the damage that the attitude that feminism has put out there in the world, how many couples is destroyed. I can go on and on forever about that, but you all heard me talk about this more times than you can imagine. So, getting into it, says here, I met my wife, I'll call her Anna, during our first year of university. We dated through university and got married right after her graduation. Smack! Way too soon, dude. Right right after she graduated? I mean, I'm guessing at the, at the most mid-20s? You barely knew her. You all, you all knew each other during school when things are relatively easy. Very minimal responsibilities and life situations coming your way. No, you can be with them for way longer if you're going to get married. Things were happy for a while until Anna discovered a lump in her right breast. <clears throat> I encouraged her to have it checked out and she was reluctant to do so, but ultimately did because breast cancer runs in her family. And sure enough, that's what she had. Like I said in the beginning, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. The good news is, if it can be considered good news, was that the breast cancer had, was extremely treatable with chemo and radiation. Based on her family history, her doctor also recommended a double mastectomy for her. That's, that'll mess anybody up, I will say that. And the fact that this guy's staying with her, even after having to have that done, says a lot about his love for her. Again, the dream husband for any woman. This put Anna in a really dark place. I can understand that, but it doesn't excuse what's about to happen. I suggested she go to therapy, but she outright refused and said that she never wanted to hear me suggest that again. Here we go with some red flags here. So I did my best to be encouraging and supportive to her. I took time off work to be at every appointment with her. I took on 100% of the household chores, both inside and out. I did all the shopping. I drove Anna everywhere she wanted to go. I planned out special dates for us. I gave her hour-long foot massage every night. I literally did whatever I could. So, you hear this. This guy is the, the dream husband, right? Now, this is one situation where, in under these circumstances, and she's been a good wife up to this point, we're assuming that, under these circumstances, I got no problem with him going above and beyond to help her, okay? As long as she's being appreciative and loving and all that. She's not snapping at him like some angry pregnant woman or some bullshit like that. And in any other circumstance, by being too good, makes him lose respect for you. But maybe in this case she did. I don't know. Now watch how his kindness is repaired. 
uh, uh, repaid. About six weeks into her treatment, Anna brought the idea of going to stay with her sister Sarah for a week. This honestly relieved me as I was burning the candle at both ends, trying to accomplish everything. And I thought some time apart would help us both. Two nights into her stay with Sarah, Anna called me and she said she wanted a divorce. I'd be like, uh, what you talking about, Willis? Throwing back to different strokes here. You want a divorce? After everything I've done for you, you all heard what he's done for her? If there's anybody that women would be lining up for her to have as a husband right here. She wants a divorce. That's the thanks he gets. She said she had read a lot about men who abandon their wives when their wives get sick, and she was determined to leave me before I could leave her. Uh, where'd you read these things? Who put this idea in your head? <clears throat> Amongst other ideas that are being put in her head. Does this guy look like the type of guy that's going to abandon his wife? If he was going to abandon her, it would have been a while ago. I can't put into words how much this crushed me. I love my wife. She was my everything. I begged her to reconsider. Smack. I get that he's hurting, and I'm sorry for that, but you can never make your wife or your girl your everything. You're, you're asking for trouble there. You all know this, okay? And there is no begging. Begging doesn't make anybody respect you. I told her I had never thought of leaving her, not even once. I asked her to go to therapy, and she refused again, which means she doesn't give a shit. I asked her to go to couples therapy with me, and again, she wouldn't. I asked her what I could do to convince her I wanted to stay, and she said there was nothing. I'm a man, and therefore, I would leave. End of story. Just like that. You want to talk about a fucking ice queen. Everything he's done for her. Just like, you're a man, you're going to leave. Where'd you get that idea put in her head? It took about a year because of where we live, thanks COVID, but eventually everything was finalized. I ended up selling the house and splitting the proceeds between me and my now ex-wife. I didn't want to stay in that town anymore, so I put in a transfer, requested my job, and ended up moving up to a town about two hours away. For the past couple of years, I've been focusing on myself much more. I got a dog. I've been on a few dates, but nothing serious. I picked up a hob at hiking as a hobby and started gardening. Well, you know what? Good for him. You see what he said there? I've been focusing on myself. Good, because he's been giving everything to her. Now, I'm willing to bet you that he was probably... The nice guy husband before she was diagnosed. So already she had a perception of him. And who knows about that? Now, I, I still say because she was diagnosed with a can with the breast cancer and the ma- double mastectomy, you know, he was doing everything he could to help her. And I got a problem with that as long as she wasn't being an asshole about it. But then again, look what happened. And notice he got a dog. Because that dog will love him and be loyal to the end of time. He could literally wake up one morning paralyzed. And that dog, wouldn't be, he couldn't feed the dog or take the dog out for a walk. And that dog would lay next to him. You, you dog people know this. The dog would just lay next to him. And that would be that. A cat would be like, the cat would eventually eat you because it needs to eat. But a dog would lay next to you that whole time. If you couldn't move, couldn't leave. You think a woman's going to be that loyal? Never. Out of the blue, Anna called me three weeks ago. Oh, imagine that. What I tell you, they always come back, guys. She said she'd been out in a, in a, been in town on a trip with friends and saw me, and all of her feelings rushed back. Well, honey, uh, you can pound sand. I don't care if your feelings rush back. What what feelings to your black heart after what you did to me? The second she called, I would have been like, click. She said she was sick and out of her mind at the time, and that I couldn't hold her words or her actions against her. Oh, bullshit, I can't. Remember the old joke about women and accountability? Yes, what she went through, believe me, I wouldn't wish it upon anybody. And it was sad and horrible, but guess what? People have been through that, and they didn't do what she did, okay? I don't accept those excuses. She said she still loved me. Did she ever love him? That she always had, and that she regretted leaving me. She begged me to give her another chance. Again, you can go pound sand, honey. I'm confused. If I'm being honest, I still love Anna, but I'm no longer in love with her. She broke my heart. I was devastated when she ended things. It took me a long time to get my head on right. But I also know she was in a really bad place because of the cancer. Dude, do not make excuses for her. Look what she did to you. But uh, do I owe it? Do I owe it to her 
and what we had to, he to hear her out. I'm scared that if we reconnect, I'll always feel that she'll always have one foot out the door. But maybe that's unfair. I don't know what to do. Should I give her another chance like she wants? Smack! Bro, I'm sorry you went through all that shit, but somebody has to smack some sense into you. No! You do not give her a second chance. Look what she did to you. What happens if something comes back, right? Is she going to dump you again? What happens if you get sick and need her and things get tough? Is she going to dump you again? No. You finally moved on and you're healing, you and your dog, and look who's back. She doesn't get a second chance here. You were amazing to her. You went above and beyond. It should be a woman's dream come true. Look how she treated you. And again, guys, notice she's coming back. They always come back, and her perception of him is that nice guy that will take her back after all that. See, you, you see these patterns, if you listen to my stories a lot, over and over and over and over again. So now we're going to go on to part two to see what he does here and how this whole thing ends. And remember what I told you about feminism coming into the picture here. Uh, update. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who left comments on my original post. I now know what people mean when they say RIP my inbox. I posted that and went to bed that never expecting it would blow up so much. By the time I woke up in the morning, the post was locked, so I couldn't respond to any comments. But I read as many as I could and tried to make everything into my consideration, or take everything into consideration. Many of you suggested that I reach out to my ex-wife Anna for an in-person conversation. Smacked all the people that suggested that. No! Dude, you're divorced. It's over. Don't talk to her anymore. It's only going to make you crazy. She doesn't deserve that. But, <laughs> but he did. He says, uh, the overwhelming consensus was that meeting her in person would tell me all I need to know. And you were right. That seemed reasonable to me. I texted her and she jumped at the chance to meet me. And we did so yesterday after I was done work. I chose to ask her to meet me at a local coffee shop. Maybe it sounds bad, but I didn't want her to meet me at my new house or anywhere private just in case. Dude, I would never in a million, I wouldn't have met with her, but I certainly wouldn't have done it at my house. Oh, hell no. And it would be as a public place as possible. And you'll see why in a moment why it was a good idea to do it in the public place. Anyway, Anna was already there when I got there. She got up and gave me a big hug. I let her, but I didn't hug back. Then we sat down, I asked her to remain quiet while I talked, and then I told her everything. I'm going to sum it up here because I honestly don't remember everything I said. I think I talked for like 10 minutes, solid, while she just sat there and teared up. This guy is like a miracle worker. He actually was able to talk, and a woman was quiet for 10 whole minutes without saying a word. Miracles happen every day. But there were tears, of course. But I told her things like how much she had devastated me. I told her that I would have stuck with her through thick and thin, no matter what. I told her that I loved her and that I hadn't changed, and hadn't changed after her diagnosis or treatment plan. I told her that I was broken after she initiated the divorce. Do you think she really gives a shit? All she wants is to have him back because probably guys aren't interested in her. Or she's realizing it's a lot harder being on her own or any number of things. She doesn't give a shit about he, how he feels, what he went through, please. <clears throat> I, was, I told her I was uh, broken after she initiated the divorce. I told her how hard it was for me to pull myself back together. A lot of you point out that if Anna and I got back together, I should be worried about what she would do next time I got she got sick, or if I got sick. Yes. And you were right. So I told her that too. And she got mad and interrupted me at that point. She contacted him to give her a second chance to hear her out. And he has very legitimate, expressing very legitimate concerns. And she has the nerve to get mad at him and interrupt him. I guess her 10 minutes of silence earlier was just too much, so she had to interrupt him. She said that I was being unfair. That I wasn't taking into consideration her mental health at the time. Yes, she was in a dark place. And, and, and I, I get that. You know, okay, I don't understand because I didn't go through that. But the point is, is that, yes, yeah, she was in a dark place and going through hell. I get that. And that guy demonstrates through his actions that he's there for her, thick and thin. And I don't care about her fucking mental dark place. She's making an excuse at this point. She says she wasn't thinking straight, but that, but that, but that now she was. I took the chance to ask her if she's been to therapy. She told me she hadn't and that she had no plans to and that she didn't need it. I have to admit, that crushed me a little. Yeah, because in her mind, I'm fine. What are you talking about? I asked her why. Now listen to this. 
Just why? It's the one question I really wrestled with over the months. And that she said that she had gone looking for support groups and found a lot of women who had stories about their partners leaving. She even mentioned Reddit, funny enough. And she said she talked it through with her sister, Sarah. And I said that Sarah, to her credit, had tried to dissuade her from divorcing me. But that, be- that between social media and some of Anna's friends, Anna felt like she had to go through what through with it to be seen as a strong woman. Strong woman, huh? That it goes right along with the feminist doctrine. So I have to dump my husband, who's been so amazing to me, so I can be seen as a strong woman. That is word for word what she said to me. I don't remember anything else exactly, but I will never forget that. She broke my heart and threw our relationship because somehow, somehow in her mind, that transferred to being strong. Thanks, feminism. And look at the distortion and look at that attitude. And let me tell you something. If she's on blogs or social media and interacting with other women that have been through the same thing and saying, your husband's going to leave you, you got to be strong, you don't need him, blah, 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 blah. Is it possible some of those angry, bitter, left women, misery loves company, they want others to be just as unhappy? Is that possible? Showing she is easily susceptible to influence. She then started trying to tell me that we could get back together again. But at that point, I just told her flat out that wasn't going to happen. Good for him. What it comes down to me for me is this, that I just can't trust her. I would always be worried about the same thing happening again. She cried a lot and tried convincing me for a little while. And when I got up to leave, she threw her iced coffee in my face and stormed out. <laughs> this is why he met her in a public place. So she's not getting her way. And like a fucking five-year-old got get pissed off and throws her drink in his face. I'd be like, thank you for reinforcing exactly why I'm done with you. Not giving you a second chance, you fucking child. Good Lord. Again, this is the thanks he gets. So yeah, we definitely are not getting back together. I have the closure I was wanted. I wish it felt better. I've been dwelling on it for the past day and a half. I keep wondering if there's something I could have done better. Some way I could have saved our relationship, but I now know there is not. I blocked her phone number. I kind of hope I never hear from her again. I th- That's a tough one. I'd say 50-50. Flip a coin. You may hear from her, you may not. But uh, maybe he needed that closure have that conversation. I don't know. He can truly move on. But it seemed like he was moving on anyway. But regardless, I wouldn't have met with her. Probably the majority of you guys listening to this would have met with her either. But um, there you go. Had to be a strong woman. You couldn't be a strong woman and get through this unless you ditch your husband. The guy that was doing all those things. You heard that. Above and beyond. Rubbing her damn feet an hour every night amongst many other things. No. So guys, like I said many times, you relationship guys, take your time. Take your time to get you know your girl. And if you're going to go down the path of marriage, which, let's be honest here, most of you guys will not do. But if you do, whatever reason, your culture, your religion, whatever, you need years with your girl to see a real-life situation come her way. Now, being diagnosed at a young age for breast cancer, that's, a, I don't know the statistics. I don't know the age range that happens. But still, that seems rather, she was rather young for that. But it's the tough real-life situation to show a person's true character. You know, sure, they were together during university days, and those were usually fun days for people. Real life shows you people's real, true colors. And if they went through some tough times, then he at least would have known before marrying her. And she just liked that. Just because some stranger she listened to on social media and her so-called friends convinced her to do this. You know, they it, misery loves company. All because you got to be a strong woman, don't need no man. Well, now she can be a strong woman alone. And, uh, well, I don't want to say what I'm thinking here, but you guys are probably thinking what I'm thinking. But uh, let's just say she's not as attractive as she once was. And you know what? She had a good guy that would love her no matter what she looked like and all that. So she gets what she deserves. And if she contacts him again, for God's sakes, do not take her call, block her, all that. Probably the next thing that's going to happen is she'll probably get some of her psycho friends bugging him about it. But uh, we shall see. So I'll see if there's any updates to that. But anyhow, guys, lots of lessons in this story. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.